Thank you, everyone. Do I, do I look the same? They say the teeny yeah, puts on 20 pounds. I want you to tell me it's not true. Because <laughs> nothing fits at the moment, but it feels true. Um, as Sarah said, I'm, a, I'm actually the MP for Pretoria East. So coming from Gauteng, we really are coming from the extremes. But it was um, lucky for me to come through this morning, especially I brought my dad. My dad's first business that he ever had was actually in the south of Joburg. So my dad got to see a bit of the south of Joburg, what it looks like now and how it's changed and the development. And it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, I said to my dad, if we didn't have GPS, I don't know how we find our way around anymore because, you know, the roads have changed, etc., etc. I will say this. There's a massive pot hole in one of the circles. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to make it my mission to make sure that that pot hole is fixed because someone's going to die. Someone's going to land over that pot hole and they won't find them again. I've reported it three times. There we go. So I'll here. I will confirm some response. But uh, we're here today um, to discuss state capture. It's not a phenomenon unknown to us now. But two years ago, it was a phenomenon that people thought was perhaps an enigma that was a made up kind of story and a made up conspiracy because it was pretty hard to imagine that state capture was actually a real thing. And uh, I can tell you as a member of the Public Enterprises Portfolio Committee, I was one of the first people that received the first dump of the Gupta emails, the Gupta leaked emails. And when we first got them, the stories that were in these emails were so unbelievable that we did think it was a conspiracy. We thought it is impossible that people would try and get away with this kind of corruption. We thought that it was impossible for anyone to enable this kind of corruption. As it turned out, it was incredibly possible and there were enablers that allowed state capture to start <coughs> taking place. And I think that when it really hit home how bad things were was when the South African uh, Names Council actually coined the phrase state capture as being the word of the year for 2017. That was the word of the year, state capture. And it's now listed, even in the Oxford Dictionary, as a term for when a country is almost sold in corruption. Sure. And that's appalling. That's not something we as South Africans should be proud of. And it's something that we fight and we fight very hard. In case you don't know um, the history behind me, my name is Natasha Mazzoni. I am the DA Shadow Minister for Public Enterprises. Um, I'm also known as the DA Shadow Minister of State Capture. Um, I'm famed for making people like Brian Malefi cry, and I take no apology for that. I'm the person that drove around Saxonwald trying to find the Shabin. I can promise you there is no Shabin in Saxonwald. I looked. I'm the person who unashamedly will expose corruption at any step of the way. I have had more death threats than anyone would care to know by people who you would least expect to be on the bad, bad guy side. But the harder they, they threaten me, the harder I push back, and the more support I get, the, the more they try and threaten us. And that's a wonderful thing, is when South Africans start uniting around a common cause. There was a stage where South Africa was incredibly divided when it came to, is state capture real? You know, is the Zuma administration as bad as it is? When it was exposed, as being as bad as it was. South Africans from all political parties united and we came together as one and we said it's, it goes this far and it goes absolutely no further. And that's what made the Department of Public Enterprises shake in their boots when they realized that their portfolio committee had decided to leave po politics at the door and when you entered parliament as a member of the Public Enterprises Committee for uh, Public Enterprises, you did not go in representing a political party. You went in representing South Africa. And that's why we didn't know what to call ourselves, so we coined the phrase Team South Africa. And that's how it became. It became like a soap opera on TV. At night, people would come home, they'd turn on the TV, and instead of putting on Seven Delano or Egoli, you put on the news to see the highlights of what had happened during the hearing. And there were times when Mondling Ngubele, who is the ANC, he's now the Deputy Minister of Finance, he, his phone broke and the screen was cracked and he couldn't read the screen properly without his glasses and then the light, the fluorescent light would affect him. So he would read stuff off his phone and then he'd give me his phone and I'd read it for him. That's how Team South Africa worked because in that particular portfolio we were fighting one thing and one thing alone and that was to save our country from the parasites that were sucking it dry. Now, I make 
no bones about this. I have been, as we stand right now, I have an 80 million rand lawsuit against me from senior executives at ESCOM for defamation of character. They are trying to withdraw this particular lawsuit. The DA is pushing that it continues to go to court because I want those people to stand in the dock and to prove that what I said was not true. Because I have the slips, I have the video footage, I have the audio footage, and I have every bank trace that every word I said is true. And I want to stand in court and I want to judge to ask those specific people in court to prove that I'm incorrect. Because I know, I know what's in front of me. Thankfully, the Zondo Commission approved that the Gupta leaked emails are going to be used as part of the evidence. Mm. Now, this, the, the, the notion of these emails is something that confuses people. There are over 250,000 emails that are on a hard drive that were literally dumped in a very um, WikiLeaks kind of manner. These emails, some of them are innoxious. They just, how's the boss? Um, was the boss pleased with work? Mm. And then you have to trace back to who was the boss. Mm. It's got interesting email addresses. Mm. People like Ashu Trawa come up all the time. Uh, people like Anoj Singh come up mm. all the time. Pseudonyms come up. Yeah. And as Pravin Godan famously said before he was um, a minister, well, he was still fired, and he was just a normal member of parliament, he said, our job is to sit and connect the dots. And we didn't connect the dots by ourselves. This was a mammoth effort. We had universities across the country who had their economics departments and their political science departments come together and help us work through these 250,000 emails and start joining the dots here or there. What we did find is that we almost missed certain things because 80% of the transactions took place in the Oberai Hotel in Dubai. Why Dubai? At the time, South Africa did not have an extradition treaty with Dubai. So if you were found guilty of a crime in South Africa and you ran to Dubai, we couldn't request your extradition back to the country. So everyone goes, well, Tash, what's the point then? Because we know that the big guns of the Gupta family and we know that Duduzani are just going to run to Dubai. Well, isn't it interesting that Minister Mike Masuta signed a treaty on Thursday? And that treaty is the anti-crime and prevention of crime treaty with the United Arab, Arab, United Arab Emirates. And that means that anyone that's found guilty of a crime in South Africa that tries to hide in Dubai will now be extradited back to South Africa to face trial. It also means that Judge Zondo will get his wish and he will actually have Ajay Gupta peer before him and not via video stream. <laughs> now you have to ask yourself this question. If you are insistent that you are not guilty of a crime, what do you do? What would you do as a normal human being? You would yeah. walk up to a police station and you'd say, hello, I'm here, I'm not guilty of this crime, arrest me, release me on, on bail, I won't flee the country, I'll give you my passport and let's get to court as soon as possible so I can clear my name. That's what you do if you weren't guilty. The fact that you actually are willing to audibly say to a judge, I refuse to come back to South Africa because I know that upon arrival at Oatamba I'll be arrested, speaks volumes. And that's what AJ Gupta did. And that's why thankfully Judge Zondo said, no, we will not accept your testimony via video, via Skype. You must come in person to testify. So the DA is now called, you see, Parliament works in, a, in an interesting way. Certain treaties are just ratified and they go through. Other treaties need to be ratified in Parliament. And an extradition treaty is one of those that needs to be ratified by Parliament. So the DA is called for an urgent sitting of Parliament, because at the moment Parliament is in recess. So we want Speaker Balek and Betty to call an urgent sitting of Parliament now, next week, so that we can go in, we can ratify this treaty, and immediately Interpol can step in and extradite the Guptas back to South Africa. In actual fact, it's not just the Guptas, there's a whole group of people that need to come back to South Africa to answer certain questions. Now, how did state capture happen? What, what was the enabling factors? I've always said it's a plan that was absolutely genius. 
And isn't it funny how there's always in, the, in, in cartoons, there's always the evil genius. Because you have to be pretty evil to come up with a plan that diabolical. Because no normal human being is going to sit down and think, how can I possibly rape a country to the point that it is almost on the brink of complete collapse and actually be okay with it? And know who you can purchase along the way to enable state capture to happen. It's diabolical. But it's genius. And I like to use the example, and it's one of the reasons I'm being sued for 80 million rand. 